Good morning, everybody. Hello, and welcome to Philip Island Down Under for the first round of the 2016 Bosra MSA GT3 Championship. It's a precursor event before we kick things off properly in 2017. So, without further ado, we're going to take you down the grid for the top 10. And as you can see on your screen now, Van Delden is back for Motorsport Auctions in 10th. Just ahead of him is his teammate with the Blue Wheels, Al McCain, in 9th. Next up on the grid we have Neil Bamba, he's in 8th for Seagate, we split the Seagate and Snorgy teams. In 7th is Paul Wormsley, he's a privateer, and just in front of him is another privateer returning, which is Saltow in 6th. Ben Hackerson also returns for the full championship, he's now back from America, he is in 5th for Seagate. Just ahead of him is the first of a trio of Acorn Printing Cars, this time it's Jason Dilworth. Just ahead of him is Tony Baird, and then it is the second of the Baird brothers in second, Barry Baird is there. Finally on pole this week is Daniel Turk, another returning driver, he joined us for the Aston Martin GT1 Championship. So that is your grid for this week, let's hand you over to the commentary team, Jason Dilworth and Simon Underhill. Thanks very much, Chris. Great grid walk. Simon, excited? Oh, very much so. This is one of my favourite circuits. So let's go. Let's see how they're, it pans out. They're already off. So uh, it's great to see all these cars with their great liveries of all the sponsors we'll mention during the race coming down to Turn 1. Daniel Turk leading That's cleanly up. away. Yeah, going into now the Southern Loop and uh, both the Motorsport Auction BMWs together there, Alan McCain and Matty Van Delden. Matty Van Delden just taking the inside line and getting in the position. Everyone absolutely nose to tail and side by side, but as far as I can see, absolutely no contact, which is great to see. Yeah, Matty Van Delden again, just making his move up uh, the side of, I think that's Neil Bamber, just falling behind of Tobias Southall around uh, Siberia, I think it is. Yeah, I don't think you could have got much more than a, a Rizzla between the two of them at that point, but no touching. And it, Brilliant. And then we have the uh, Acorn, uh, Acorn Printing team all together, uh, being chased down by Paul Walmsley down the, uh, the Garden Straight, so let's just see how this pans out. Yeah, by Paul. this point I'd already uh, lost a place to Ben there, Ben Hackerson, right under pressure from Paul. Um, so this was quite an interesting little section of the race. Yeah, Paul Walmsley, very quick driver. Um, you know, he's uh, proven himself to be uh, one of the ones to watch this season. I think, uh, Jason. Definitely, they've been uh, being very gracious and giving me the place back and handing it also to Paul um, while having to go around the outside after that little mistake there. And as you can see, he's glitching a little bit on the screen as his connection wasn't great, unfortunately. Yeah, just going around Honda corner and uh, Tobias Salto just on the inside here. I think it just looks like he's going to take the position away from um, Ben Hackerson uh, as we now go on board with uh, myself. Yes, in a, uh, a 56 sandwich if I remember rightly and struggling unfortunately keeping it uh, stopped behind Ryan. That must have been a scary moment. Yeah, it was. Uh, just uh, couldn't quite get on the brakes quick enough and uh, managed to get the car slightly out of control, but uh, regained it and carried on racing. Here we see uh, some of the leaders. That's Tony in third, already catching up with some back markers. Uh, he's just going to go past Dave White there, who takes massive evasive action. Yeah, I think that's one of his downfalls. He just needs to keep it on the track, David. But uh, I know for a fact he's enjoying the season already. So, yeah, keep it up, Dave. You're doing a really great job letting the front runners pass cleanly. Absolutely. He gets so far out of the way, it's, it's uh, almost too much at times. But I thank him for it massively. Oh, what we got here? We've got the uh, motorsport auction team being chased down by Ricky Green, I think, here. This looks like it could end up in disaster or maybe not. We might have a clean uh, bit of manoeuvring here around uh, the Doohan corner and into the Southern Loop. Yeah, one of those was a, uh, a back marker of the motorsports auctions team uh, and kept very nicely out of the way as well. Let the, uh, this really good battle through. As you can see, the, um, the liveries, like Jason mentioned before, are all looking nice and shiny. And uh, we see their Seagate and uh, their, their sponsor for Bit Bosra doing having a really nice livery on the, on the BMW, I think it is there, Jason. In fact, there's a trail of three BMWs. Nice to see that. Yeah, absolutely. All the liveries uh, look great. I know that those involved have done a great job on them. Just the uh, wheel colours to help us differentiate between the drivers. But more important is just how close these guys are staying and, and managing to keep it really nice and clean. Although, as oh, I say that... There we go. There's Alan McCain into the kitty litter. Unfortunate. Uh, don't stay with him to see how well he caught hold of that. But 
It's uh, three of the eight corn cars. Uh, I'm obviously massively biased, but I think they're the best looking on the grid. Well, yes, I uh, have to agree with that one. Uh, I, I think, that, again, it's just a completely different um, livery that we've not seen before. We're just going past there, Rolf, just to think it is in the Mercedes. Oh, no, nice. boom, Tony yeah. bars off into the tyres. That was it, Rolf. Uh, Tony said to me afterwards that uh, Rolf had put him off, unfortunately. Um, just one of those things when you're overtaking rather than hot lapping. And then we've got a couple of Mercedes here battling into the uh, Southern Loop as well. Paul Walmsley and I think it might be Ben Ackerson. It Looks is. like Paul's just going to get the edge uh, on Ben. Privateer against uh, Pro Driver there, is he? Uh, no, Ben's uh, uh, in the amateurs, isn't he? Yeah, yes, I think he is, yes. Yes, he is looking at the badge on his car. Just going into the uh, Honda corner now. Just see how this pans out. Oh, and they're very close up the back end of Paul then, nearly touched, but luckily he got away with it and um, got Tobias chasing him down into uh, the Siberia corner now. Let's just see how this pans out. And it's important to note, viewers, down in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that we've skipped ahead to lap 20 there and these cars still that close. Uh, Simon, are you flashing your lights there? I think that's a back marker. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, I was trying to flash him just to say it was there, but um, you know, he, he took his line and rightly so, and I just had to back off. Yeah, oh yeah, that's how it happens. But at this point, you're, you're ten places up from where you started. I think we might be mid pit stops as well. But uh, oh, and a yeah. little uh, little excursion. Yeah, a little excursion there due to Dave just spinning on that corner. Unfortunately, that's the only place I could go. But Paul, Paul Walms leaving into the pits now to take his on board his fuel. Yeah, one of the first to do so um, up towards the front, if I remember rightly. Pulled the trigger nice and early. Took a bit of a risk. Yeah, each, each driver has different strategies. Some people tend to leave it to the end where they've only got a few um, few bits of ga oh, a few gallons in the tank, but others like to take it early to see if they can get the undercut. But uh, as we go on board with Ian, Ian Thorne chasing down Ian Robinson, again, a pair of BMWs. And quite far down the order, but still really good close racing, which shows what Bosler is all about here, I think. Then we see uh, Daniel going through some more back markers here. He had, yeah. By this point, he had a massive lead. And we've got people coming out the pits as well, so a lot of cars taking evasive action just to try and um, avoid any any collisions and crashes. Here I'm just trying to, uh, to just keep up with Daniel as he was the leader of the race and to try and just get some places back as I dropped down a few places from where I started on, on the grid. Yeah, 24th lap here of what ended up being somewhere just over 30, if I remember rightly. Matty Van yeah. Delden back on the uh, on the camera again for motorsports auctions who I'm sure will be very pleased with that he had a great oh and there goes Daniel Turk Paul, Paul, Lee, uh, Paul Citroen uh, race leader just falling off into the kitty litters there did you see that Jeez? at that moment in time he was about 20 seconds in front I think for, uh, I passed him on track and yet after the pit stops he must have had an absolutely brilliant recovery after that spin and yeah. still managed to come out in front so uh, hats off to him yeah, full credit. And here we have Barry Bard chasing down Mr. Van Delden and just going into the garden straight now, heading towards Dewan Corner with uh, Simon Undrill just um, in between. Maybe maybe getting away, maybe just letting through. Let's just see how it, it, this goes. Yeah, recovery drive from Barry here. He, he was well up there on pace, so um, these recovery drives are, are some of the most exciting ones I know as a driver. Um, very difficult to do, though, when you're trying not to get in the way of anyone else's race as well. Yeah, the Audi proving to be a fast car, especially down at the straights. And, uh, I think that's where the Audis are making up their time um, from what we've seen so far. So one, one car to look out for, maybe the right choice of car for this season. Potentially. And uh, do you remember whether you touched there? Because that no, looked we didn't. really close. Yeah. No, we didn't. But I know I got the uh, inside line for the next quarter, so I thought I'm having this one. <laughs> yeah, fighting for position there at the, at the time. It, doesn't matter that there was about a second and a half a lap uh, different in pace, which is, which is what racing's all about. Barry had made a mistake. He's potentially got more pace at this point in the race, but you're holding up cleanly, fairly, and it's great to see everyone racing that well. Yeah, Matthew Van Delden just keeping up with the pack as well. Love I think this by this time, the tyres are starting to, uh, to sort of give in a little bit now, and so that's why Tony was, um, sorry, Barry was catching up quite quickly. Yeah, this little section, these last two corners into the uh, Gardner Strait, as you say, are very much more technical than they look. That little lift that you have to do there to get back on the power is massively important. As I say, unfortunately, you've touched the grass, and I think that's going to give Barry the positioning for 
uh, turn one. Not before yeah, turn gets, one, luckily, uh, for him. Yeah, just gets a good clean pass now, going into Southern Loop, and then Matty Van Delden just chasing me down now um, onto, on lap 28. Exactly, lap 28, I was just going to say, you're still seven places up there on your starting position. These two drivers around you having slight recovery drives, Matty taking that place, uh, and I will say for now. Yeah, so Matty Van Delden and myself have always had a bit of a... Uh, competition between us and throughout the whole of the Bosra Championships that we've run so far and here comes the uh, the usual underhill dive bomb but luckily managed <laughs> to get onto the uh, brakes before actually touching Matty. I'm glad you brought it up, I wasn't going to. Oh, it's, a, it's a running running, running joke now for the Bosra I think. But very close to the back end of Matty but again just keep it nice and clean but then I decide that's it enough's enough. Yeah I uh, had a move very similar to this with Paul at the start of the race that wasn't shown. Um, interesting one to go for, I nearly uh, touched as well. Very easy to do. Yeah, my master say apologies to Matty. Um, it was my fault again, I'm on the hill uh, dive bomb. But here we've got Tony now, the, the other brother, the other bad brother, um, in with the pack and again making his move in the Audi. Right, who haven't we mentioned? I think the Synology we haven't mentioned enough, actually, funnily enough, being as you've been on the screen for most of this race, uh, just to mention enough of the sponsors during this uh, roundup. Yes, yeah, Synology, really good um, provider or, or sponsor for, for Bosra. Again, I'm saying with the um, Acorn printing and with the clothing that they provide, uh, and also motorsport auctions with their support they give Bosra. Love these onboard shots really gives us a bit of more of an idea of how it is to drive in these sim races and how close to reality it actually is compared to just a few years ago. Yeah, I see Tony going wide there, and I'm just able to get the uh, position back. And this is right at the end of the race, uh, 35th lap, so pretty sure we're coming very close to the end so it's good to get those positions right at the end for you after a difficult race. I'm close race now between Alan and, uh, and Barry as we don't go on board with Alan just to switch back and uh, we can see Barry takes a position from Alan um, around Siberia into turn 7 and 8. Yeah, absolutely great move again I don't want to overstate it just how clean this is I don't think we've seen more than a couple of contacts between cars throughout this whole race there we go uh, and concentrate on Paul here and uh, Soltau as they come to the latter part of the last lap. Again, super clean, super close together, both holding it together nicely. Yeah, brilliant overtake manoeuvre and uh, Soltau's car looks like a bit of a stealth fighter being on all black. <laughs> it really does. Menacing. Yeah, it's quite menacing uh, whether it's in the rear view mirror or uh, right in front of you. So just going in, just going into turn ten now. Say the uh, the really tight left right hander into the left hander, and again it's all important to get the power on just right around these set of bends. And they're and coming think... into the last corner. Bit of traffic from the 56 car. Uh, Daniel's already gone through. He's already won. Uh, it was myself in second. Toby's taken that third place on the last lap, followed by uh, Paul, then Ben Hackerson and the rest of the results you can see on the top left hand side of your screen but an absolutely cracking race don't you think Simon? Yeah fantastic race really enjoyed it and I think everybody who took part enjoyed it too and I think they're all looking forward to the next round Jace. Yeah well absolutely we've uh, recorded these in slightly weird orders but the next race is Sebring International uh, it's actually live on the on the uh, YouTube channel at the moment and you can subscribe to see more of the videos after they've come out Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for, to the sponsors who make this all possible that we've mentioned throughout the race. And we'll see you next time for the until, race from Sabrina. Until next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bye. Simon. Bye.